Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I'm going to be wrapping up this year's Bleak Week, which, if you aren't familiar, is something my husband and I have been doing for the past few years, where we spend a week in December leading up to the shortest day of the year, um, and we watch a bleak film every night for the week. <laughs> it's lots of fun. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be talking about the seven films that we watched this year, and they were all really excellent films. I would definitely recommend each and every one of these. They were also very bleak, so um, it definitely was a successful <laughs> bleak week in the fact that they were all, yeah, pretty uh, heavy, um, but also the, um, yeah, the films themselves were really excellent. Uh, they were all at least four stars for me. I think one of them I rated four and a half stars. And I'll just go through these in the order that we watched them, just to keep it easy. So we started off with They Shoot Horses, Don't They, from 1969, directed by Sidney Pollock. And this is set in the uh, Depression era, USA, like 1930s, um, and there is a contest being held for a dance marathon. Um, of course there's a cash prize so that attracts lots of entrants and we are following yeah these characters and the host of it as yeah things go on and on and on. Um, this yeah was really excellent I'm glad I finally watched this one. I thought it was interesting in the sense of what people are a willing to do for entertainment as in creating it um, and also what people are willing to watch for entertainment as well which you know in today's uh, you know world of reality tv and everyone living on the internet is yeah pretty crazy um, yeah to compare the two um, but yeah this one has a lot of great performances and um, yeah, it was just very dramatic and uh, gripping. Um, it was tense at times and yeah, depressing at times. And then yeah, the ending, obviously not gonna spoil it, but yeah, what an ending. So yeah, yeah if you're looking for more of the Hollywood end of, of Bleak, then this is a great one. Next, we watched Limbo from 2021, directed by Soi Chiang. This is a film from Hong Kong. It's in black and white, and it's got a really great style to it. Not just the fact that it's in black and white, but it has, yeah, just a really great visual style. Um, it is kind of a, like, a crime detective thriller. Uh, we're following, uh, yeah, a couple of detectives who are trying to track down um, a killer after a couple of bodies have been found and of each of these bodies the one hand has been severed. Um, so yeah, it definitely had a little bit of Seven vibes, so if you like that kind of gritty crime thriller then I would definitely recommend this one. And yeah, we learn more about the characters um, and yeah, there's definitely some, you know, bleakness there. Um, there's also another character, a female character, who basically, um, yeah, did something previously and is trying to um, kind of gain forgiveness for this thing that she did uh, without getting into spoilers. So anyway, she ends up helping these detectives in, yeah, trying to track down the killer is the the very basic gist of it I would say um but yeah this was so gripping um it had a really great mixture of being action-packed um and yeah some pretty brutal violence um but then also yeah just a really compelling story a really compelling characters um so yeah if you're looking for a really good but dark thriller um and yeah if you like world cinema then definitely check this one out. Then we watched Submarino from 2010, directed by Thomas Vinterberg. This is about two brothers. They have had a rough upbringing with an alcoholic mother and there's a traumatic event that takes place uh, while they're kids. And then basically the story picks up 
years later they're both now adults and have kind of been living separate lives really um, haven't had much contact with each other if at all and they end up yeah coming back together into each other's lives um, but yeah each of them is on kind of their own path of you know self-destruction in one way or another you know whether it being drink or drugs and um, yeah so we're following these two you know, troubled characters who are dealing with a bunch of shit <laughs> basically and yeah the continuation of the yeah, struggles that they are going through. This was definitely a bleak one just in the things that these characters have gone through and are dealing with um, but yeah great performances um, it is a bit of a quiet slow burn uh, for the most part. Yeah I really liked the storytelling and the characters this one is Danish I believe so yeah another one for fans of world cinema and um, yeah if you like your kind of slow burn character driven stories then you might want to look this one up. Next we watched a documentary and this was Tiny The Life of Erin Blackwell from 2016 directed by Martin Bell and this is a follow-up to an 80s documentary called Streetwise which we actually watched for Bleak Week last year and yeah it was a really great documentary but yeah very sad ultimately and um, this one is kind of following one of those people in particular Erin also known as Tiny she was kind of partly living on the streets as a teenager and got into prostitution and drugs and yeah this is following her life over the years and yeah catching up with her years later and yeah looking at her life and um, she has 10 children at this point um, so yeah you could definitely see this one as maybe like poverty porn, misery porn, whatever you want to call that kind of thing. Um, I do see why some people didn't like this one in that aspect. I still thought it was a really good documentary and I thought it was interesting uh, to yeah hear a bit more about her and her family and there definitely seems to be a lot of you know good within their family and a lot of happiness um, in certain ways but there's also drug addiction and it yeah it was very sad to see um, yeah some of her children be going down a path of um, yeah crime and addiction and things like that you know that cycle which is just yeah, really sad to see um, so yeah this was a bleak one in that respect but I don't mean it in like a derogatory way to them as people you know um, because it's not the only element of their lives if that makes sense so yeah I did think it was a really good and interesting documentary. Then we watched Boat People from 1982 directed by Anne Hui and this was probably my favourite, <laughs> using the term loosely, um, one of the bunch. Um, this one I rated four and a half stars, so slightly higher than the four stars that all of the other films got. So yeah, really they were all excellent, but this one was just a standout to me. So again, for fans of world cinema, I would highly recommend this one, but just, you know, be prepared um, for it to not be a particularly fun watch. Um, so this is set in Vietnam after the Vietnam War as the country is in a communist regime and we're following a Japanese photographer who is staying there to yeah, report back on what is going on in the country at this point um, but of course he's only been shown certain things that the country want you know the rest of the world to see um, but after a while he starts kind of digging a bit deeper and yeah finding out more of the truth of what is going on in the country and he also uh, befriends a family and so kind of follows them and their you know trials and tribulations so this was more of your yeah slow slower paced uh, drama uh, but again great characters um, really beautifully shot um, like yeah just the style of it was really fantastic and great to watch um, it is sad it does have some shocking moments um, and some moments of violence and like yeah the effects of war and post-war um, so 
you know, war films in general are, you know, not the most fun to watch. Um, and this is no exception. Uh, but yeah, I really did think this was a standout film for me of, the, of a week of excellent films. So if this one sounds interesting to you at all, then I would definitely recommend checking it out. Then we watched another war-related film, because, you know, why not? Um, this was Interrogation from 1989, directed by Richard Bogatsky, and this is set in Stalinist Poland, and we're following a character, Tonya, who is arrested and, yeah, held prisoner, basically, and interrogated over and over um, you know, in, to, in an attempt to try and get her to confess certain crimes. Um, and yeah, at the beginning she's, you know, proclaiming her innocence and doesn't know why she's there, but the longer she's there, you know, she has to adapt to her situation and the, you know, form relationships with the people that she's, you know, shares cell with and uh, people, you know, who are doing the interrogating. Um, so yeah, I thought this one had an amazing performance from the actor playing Tonya. Uh, let me check her name. Christina Janda. Yeah, I thought she was incredible. And this one is, yeah, it's another bleak drama, really. But yeah, I really did think this was an excellent film. And then we finished the week off with The Plague Dogs from 1982, directed by Martin Rosen. And I knew this one was going to be the saddest one of the bunch, and I was not wrong. I started crying at the beginning of this film and pretty much cried my way through the whole thing. I was left with like a pile of snotty tissues at the end of it. Um, so yeah, this is about two dogs who escape a testing facility. And so yeah, the testing on animals aspect is obviously um, yeah, really horrible just to start off with um, and yeah, we're following these two dogs who have escaped and are trying to survive out in the wild but um, yeah, people are after them as well and yeah, I just don't even know what to say about this one but it was just super fucking sad. I'd still think it is an excellent film and I would recommend it but you know, be in the right frame of mind to watch it I would say. Um, I really did enjoy the animation style, um, yeah, you know, it's early 80s, so we've kind of still got that, like, little bit of, you know, 70s vibe going on. Um, yeah, if you liked Watership Down, I mean, that's a traumatic experience as well. Um, but yeah, if you like that but haven't seen The Plague Dogs like me, um, then I would recommend giving it a watch, but yeah, definitely have like a box of tissues ready because, oh my god, it was just the saddest thing. <laughs> and that pretty much wraps up Bleak Week for 2023, uh, the third annual Bleak Week, and a tradition we plan on continuing <laughs> for the foreseeable future. This year's was definitely a successful one in that all of the films definitely fit the Bleak criteria, uh, for better or worse, but they were also all really, really good films as well. Like, I would definitely recommend all of these if they sound interesting to you. Um, but yeah, just know going into them that they're, they might be a bit heavy and, you know, you might need some tissues. Um, so yeah, if you have watched any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts about them. And uh, yeah, otherwise, I hope you had a great Christmas or anything else you might celebrate at this time of year. I can't believe we're almost at the end of 2023 and it's going to be the new year right around the corner. Anyway, I will take this opportunity to wish you all a very, very happy new year. I hope 2024 is a wonderful year for all of you. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it <laughs> and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye.